Far From Home wouldn't be the same movie without its incredible special effects. Everything from touching up Spidey's suits to creating the elementals required multiple companies, hundreds of people, and hours of work. So we'll spend this video breaking down their additions to the film and just how incomplete it would look without them. In every interview, he's like, when I wear the bubble hat, and I'm like, no, you didn't. <laughs> Far From Home's most memorable scene has got to be the intense illusion battle, the big midway fight sequence of the film. Framestore, the company in charge of this sequence, was given an unusual amount of freedom to create the scene. They weren't given a set script to follow. Instead, they were given the creative freedom to come up with the concepts for the illusions at the same time they were animating and adding effects to the shots. This gave them the unique opportunity to provide direction for the on-set production team. For example, with this shot where MJ is attacked by Mysterio. Framestore blocked out the animation ahead of time with a CG MJ, complete with precise lighting from the moon and lights of the Eiffel Tower. This rendered footage was passed along to the set production, who were able to recreate the exact lighting Framestore needed for the shot. This allowed them to slip Zendaya's performance into the final product looking absolutely perfect. By the way, the construction site where the battle takes place? 100% CG. Framestore created the entire building model, adding Tom Holland's mocap footage on top. They used a mocap suit instead of filming Tom in costume to save time on set. All of those reality-bending illusions would have meant way too many costume changes for just one sequence. That nightmare-inducing zombie Iron Man utilized mocap as well. Framestore went through several designs for the undead hero, finding the right balance to be horrifying without showing anything too gruesome. The final product finds a good middle ground, resembling a mummy beneath the broken bits of machinery. Marvel moviegoers are no stranger to the incredible holograms of this cinematic universe, which means the VFX teams have to keep their designs consistent with the Marvel style while putting in a few new twists to keep the visuals from getting stale for longtime fans. For this scene where Mysterio is introduced as Quentin Beck and explains the elemental attacks, filming was done using a special light box table. Rising Sun Pictures had to not only design and place the holograms in the scene, but adjust the lighting and colors depending on which holograms were showing to make them look like they were really in the room with the actors. The work had to be done in layers, sometimes completely removing the lighting from on set. The lighting in the raw footage lacks the subtle colors reflecting from the holograms that don't just make the scene look pretty, but create an atmosphere to complement the actors' performances. Sometimes, an actor's job boils down to fighting invisible monsters on set. The scene with the water elemental battle was filmed on set with recreations of buildings from Venice on top of a huge pool of water and blue screens as backdrops. While the scene utilized a ton of CG, most of the stunts were accomplished by Tom and his stunt doubles, Luke Scott and Greg Townley. I never have a stunt double, it's always me. VFX not only hid the wires required to help Tom jump from pole to pole and vault onto the Rialto Bridge, but filled in the backgrounds of Venice and, of course, brought the water elemental to life. There were no rigs or dummies used for the monster, which means the actors had to rely on their imaginations to really sell their performances. All of that water they were drenched with was real, though, and very cold. Similar techniques were used for filming the scenes in London. While portions of the scenes set on Tower Bridge were filmed on location, they also filmed using set pieces such as the tour bus in front of green screens. The shots littered with rubble and broken down cars were set pieces in front of green screens too. For wide shots, Imageworks built a complete 3D model of Tower Bridge. This model was also used for filming all the destruction that took place during the climactic final battle. During all this action, we see tons of drones in various states of despair. Imageworks was able to create all of these broken bots by altering their original models. The drones were constructed out of various individual pieces, all coming together to form a single machine. Like the water elemental, the drones didn't use any objects on set as stand-ins to help the actors visualize the scene. Here's what Peter's final confrontation with Beck really looked like on set. Believe it or not, this scene set in a vibrant field of tulips was filmed in an empty grass lot in the UK. The jet and all the flowers were CG. 
Image Engine had to simulate an entire field of tulips with natural wind as well as the jet landing. Over 2 million tulips were simulated in this scene. There were 8 colors and 8 different tulips created for each color. In order to render all of them efficiently, they used a method called pre-caching, where software will download data ahead of time in anticipation of its use. That way, the computers weren't forced to simulate 2 million flowers at the same time. Stripped of CGI, this scene is just Tom Holland and Jon Favreau standing in some grass. Did you know Imageworks did VFX for all the previous Spider-Man movies? That's right, they provided effects for the original trilogy and The Amazing Spider-Man. Producers were actually reluctant to go to them again for the MCU installments since they wanted to give the third iteration of the hero a fresh new look. That was until they saw this test footage Imageworks whipped up to prove that they were up to the task. That's not Tom Holland in costume, that's completely CG. The 3D model looked and moved so convincingly that even Tom Holland himself was fooled. To innovate on their previous work, they focused on making MCU Spider-Man the most realistic one yet. They did this by studying imperfections in Tom's movements from unused takes and incorporating them into the animated Spider-Man. Moments of hesitation or getting caught off balance helped make the CG Spidey feel far more grounded in reality than any of the previous films. While some of Spidey's suits are completely computer-generated and require a mocap suit, even the costumes on set require digital tweaking here and there. It can be as simple as removing wrinkles to keep the suit looking smooth, or adding wear and tear from the intense action sequences. Following in Tony Stark's footsteps, Peter enters the workshop in the back of the jet to build his own suit for the first time since he ran around Queens in sweats. While the shots of Peter entering are all CG, there was also a physical set for the workshop. After filming Tom on set, the holograms were added in post with VFX. Image Engine had to create an exact replica of the set in order to accurately layer the holograms and moving machinery over the real footage, bringing the workshop to life in the final product. This scene isn't just an important character moment for Peter, but a chance for the audience to see what goes into building a Stark Tech Spidey suit. Image Engine had to decide what the individual elements of the suit would look like, ultimately breaking it down into three layers for the construction process. There is a white, wet fiber layer, a layer of black and red fabric detailing, and a layer for hard surfaces such as the eyepieces and chest patches. The company in charge of VFX for the final battle in London, Imageworks, kept these details consistent when adding battle damage to the suit. If we look at his suit closely during his emotional reunion with MJ, we can see patches of white material where the suit sustained damage. Before we go, here's a bonus fact. Marvel is so serious about keeping spoilers from leaking that even the VFX teams have to follow strict rules, working without internet access, and never sending images or emails. 